Hello and thanks for joining us. We continue our Hopeful Healings, a devotional Bible study series. We're going to turn our attention to the Gospel of Mark uh, today. And it is that uh, famous story about friends that are carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and they tear a hole in the roof and later uh, lower him down before Jesus. A uh, wonderful story, one of my favorites. So as you turn to the Gospel of Mark chapter 2, let me offer a prayer for us on this day. Gracious God, be with us. Lord, we know that you are always present. And as the people in this story, so many of them packed the house uh, that they might be uh, before you and, and know you and feel your presence and receive your healing goodness. Lord, we place ourselves before you now that you might bring hope and healing into our lives through this time of study. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's turn our attention to this text, um, Mark chapter 2, verse 1. And we're I'm going to read all the way to verse 12. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door, and he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing him to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. But let me just say, I hope that we all have some friends like that, that would not only bring us before God, but would go to that. I mean, think about a paralyzed man, they lift him up onto the roof. I mean, how hard would that, that be? Um, lift him up onto the roof. Then they dig through the roof. Um, and you sort of have this idea of a mud thatched sort of um, roof and then lower him down. I mean, they did a lot of work if, if only all of us had friends like that. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, no, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves, and he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, Stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat, and they went out before all and went out before all of them so that they were all amazed and glorify God we have never seen anything like this so Jesus forgives his sins um, and Jesus heals him of whatever has paralyzed him and he takes up his mat and walks away so clearly we see a healing in in this story um, and there's the physical healing of the paralyzed man. There is also a spiritual healing that takes place in his life, and that is that his sins are forgiven. Remember, again, we, we're dealing with a world um, in this uh, ancient Near East in which the people believed, they, they would have believed that this paralyzed man was so because he has sinned or his parents um, or grandparents before him had sinned and that the, their punishment has been waged on him. And, and I, uh, again, it's just, it's difficult for us to imagine a world in which you see someone who's paralyzed and your first thought is, I wonder what they did wrong to make God so angry at them that God would paralyze them. But that's the world in which they live. And so it's very important in these stories that there would be sort of this twofold healing that spiritually he's healed and then physically he's healed. Now, I, 
let me say a couple of things about sort of the, the broader perspective of what is b- being healed here. One, the story never says anything about this man's faith. It doesn't, it doesn't name him as being Jewish. Uh, it doesn't name him as being faithful or following the laws or anything that would have given us a descriptor about who he was. So there, there's no sense in this story that Jesus heals him because he has been good and faithful. There's, there's no sense in the story that he has won God's favor. In fact, it's just the opposite, that, that he is not known to us in any way. The strength of his faith is not known to us in any way. And God brings about this healing in his life. And this is, this is one of the stories that I think helps me to understand what in Methodism we call prevenient Grace, P R E V E N I E N T, prevenient grace, and and uh, this is a a grace that we understand go, comes before before us, before our knowledge of God, that that God is working in our lives and giving us grace and trying to win us, to woo us, to draw us to pull us into a life of deeper faith. And it's not, God doesn't do this because we've sort of taken one step and so then God invites us to take another step. It's as if we don't even know that we're supposed to be stepping anywhere. And uh, God in uh, gives us a kind of grace that then awakens us. And we go, oh, look, here's a path. We don't even know that there's a path. And, and God awakens us to that path. That's what God is doing here for this man. Not because he was faithful, but God is opening his eyes, is giving him grace, is wooing him, is, is pulling him, is drawing him to a path that he's never I mean, walked as a paralyzed man, but, but he's never walked as a spiritual man before. Provenient grace that... God's grace isn't given to us because we've been good. God's grace is given to us because God is good and God invites us into this, this goodness. And, and that's, that's what I, I want to, us to focus on in, in terms of what is healed in this story. The spiritual life of the man, healed. The physical paralysis, Healed but also what can be healed and what sometimes needs to be healed in us is a performative aspect of our faith that God will love me more if I perform my faith in the right ways or that um, God's love is conditional based on my goodness. We need to be healed of that. God's love is, is unconditional. That God's love is not, not based on, again, our goodness, but rather based on God's goodness. That God doesn't give grace to those who are more faithful than the others. That God gives grace abundantly to all, and, it, and it's not our faith that earns God's grace, but rather God's grace that compels our faith. And sometimes we need to be healed of that performative, sort of productive uh, attitude of faith that I need to produce something in order to make God happy or pleased with me. So I want you to hold on to that. And and the the other thing I want you to hold on to from this passage is, and I emphasize this when when I read it, that God looks up and um, in the story and God says, um, because of the, the text, verse five, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. When Jesus saw the faith of the friends, then he forgives the paralyzed man. Do you realize what that is saying? That your faith, our faith, 
somehow has a he can can have a, an impact on someone else such to the degree that they are healed. And someone else's faith can have an impact such to a degree that it changes your life. I'm sure all of us can uh, reflect upon people whose faith really changed our lives. What I invite you to reflect on now is where this week is your faith possibly going to be a healing agent for God in someone else's life? Where this week, because of your faith, is someone else going to experience God's healing? That's part of what this story is about. And uh, it's exciting to think that our faith can have that kind of impact upon others. May it be so. God bless.